in the center of this is a nemesis of mine. It's a programming board that I bought very early on when I first started to play with the A-Tiny 85s and the A-Tiny 13s. At least it was marketed as a programming board. The very first time I used it, before really understanding anything about ABRs, I put an A-Tiny 13 chip in there, the wrong way around. I plugged it into the computer, the net result being that the A-Tiny 13 chip blew up, uh, emitting lots of smoke, the programmer uh, blew up, and the computer shut down. So, um, I, yeah, I was a little gun-shy after that about whether or not to uh, to actually use this, and I, I became convinced that you, you couldn't use it, particularly when I found that if you had an Arduino Uno, that you could program these chips using Arduino as ISP, and with a shield, it made it very easy. So you could plug in all sorts of different size chips, including the A-Tiny 85 and the A-Tiny 13 in here. Very easy to program them and nothing blew up and it worked well. So I used this for a good couple of years. And then eventually uh, I was working with these, uh, what well, they're called USB ISPs and, um, and then communicating directly with a chip via some of these adapters that um, we've seen previously on this uh, channel. So, um, it sort of came to pass that I didn't really use <laughs> these at all for such a long time, but just recently I was reaching in sort of semi-randomly to find out, um, or, you know, to try and get some inspiration for this channel uh, of what, about what project to do next, and um, this thing came out. So I thought, oh, okay, maybe it's time that I explored it again, because in the meantime, I had looked at this is a DigiSpark, that's an A-Tiny 85 there. This is another variation of the same thing. And they come with what's called a micro-nucleus bootloader, which enables you uh, to program these without special USB uh, protocols. So it's called a virtual USB. And so I just thought in the back of my mind, maybe I should revisit this to um, exercise the ghosts of AVR chips past, but also to maybe find out a little bit more about bootloaders and how uh, I might be able to use this to program up, certainly the A-Tiny 85. I'm not too sure about the A-Tiny 13 because I haven't been able to find much information about micro-nucleus bootloaders and um, the A-Tiny 13. So my plan is to uh, connect this up, see if I can get some communications between the computer and these chips when they're in this format. Have a look at maybe uploading or um, changing the version of the micronucleus bootloader because there is just a new version that's that's been released that looks quite good. And then maybe also doing some programming as well. At the end of it, of course, it'll just be some blinking LEDs, but along the way, hopefully, I'll learn a little bit about how these micronucleus device, uh, devices work. And, uh, and we'll go from there. Starting with the classic DigiSpark uh, and just a blinking light, uh, we're going to upload so you actually don't have it plugged in. Then it requests you to plug it in and you do that and then it's uploaded. And just note that this one is version 1.6. Uh, so that's the older micro-nucleus bootloader. So here I am on the GitHub for micro-nucleus and uh, all these files are pretty new actually. The latest version is 2.5 just from a couple of days ago. Uh, so all the details are on the site itself. Uh, it does say that there is support for the entire A-Tiny family. I'm not sure that's true but anyway uh, We'll just download the zip file and unzip it and go from there. Right, so here we are. We uh, I've just downloaded the latest files from Micronucleus. So let's see what we get. So we get in the command line folder, we get the ability to build the command line Micronucleus. Let's do that first. So if we go into command line see what's in there. Uh, yep, there's a make file, there's a micronucleus.c file, so we should be able to make that. And then if we have another look, yep, so there's the actual micronucleus. So that is a little uh, file that we'll use to, um, to upgrade or to 
uh, add the micronucleus bootloader onto a, a T85 or whatever we're using. So that's good, we've built that. Let's see what else we've got. Uh, under firmware, we have configuration files for the various devices. We've got a make file there. We've got, uh, looks like pre-compiled releases. Let's just have a look at that. LS, LA releases. And yes, yeah, so these were compiled a couple of days ago. So that's the one that we want. And there is a little bit of an issue, I think, if we try and add that straight away. So I'm just going to check. I'll just pull out the the actual uh, DigiSpark. So if we say, okay, we want to do the T85. I think you have to do in run first. And then we want T85. And it is a default or underscore default hex. Okay, so it'll say plug in your device. So we'll do that. I don't think this will be successful because this already has a bootloader on it. So yeah, so it actually says um, there's a problem with that file. So it has the version 1.6 which we knew and it says, oh it says no such file or directory. Ah, oh, that's interesting. So let's just see, that wasn't the error that I was expecting. Ah, okay, so we'll go to releases and we'll go to T85 and default. I have to pull this out again and put it back in again. Yeah, that was the, the uh, which is well known. If you look in the forums, you can see this all the time. So it says the program file is too big for the bootloader. Basically what it's saying there is that it already has a bootloader on there, so don't be giving me another one. What you really need to do is to do the upgrade. So if we go out, and we look at what else is in this folder, you'll see, uh, oh no, we need to go back into the firmware and we need to go to the upgrades folder. And if we go, what is in here? Now you can build your own upgrades as well. This is only compiled a couple of days ago, so I think it should be fine. So let's try that, micronucleus run, and we want to do the upgrade T85, and not the aggressive one, because we don't like the aggressiveness and then we'll plug this back in again and hopefully this time it will yeah that's fine so it says it has 1.6 at the moment so if we go back to our blinky and the last time that we installed this it was 1.6 so now if we run this blinky and plug it in Yeah, it says it has the device has firmware 2.5, which is great. Uh, so that's mission accomplished in being able to upgrade an existing micronucleus bootloader to a new one. And this is what it looks like, of course, a blinking light. So that's the original sort of form of the DigiSpark. There is a slightly newer one where you do plug into uh, a USB um, but uh, it's still basically the same. So yeah, a couple of different versions of that original DigiSpark and that's the blinking sketch working. So now uh, what I did was I took a, a vanilla ATiny85 and using a high voltage programmer just wiped out the bootloader. So there should be nothing in there at this stage except for, um, well here we can, uh, through AVR Dude, we can detect that it's an uh, ATiny85 and it just reads the fuses, so we've got a 6.2, a DF, and an FF, whatever that means. So we'll just go to the website and have a look at it. And uh, probably the most important thing here to see is that the self-programming enable hasn't been enabled. So what we've got to do is just change that. So we're just going to change the timing first. So that's going to be um, an F1 and df for the timing and then we've got an fe instead of an ff and that will enable us to actually uh, program the bootloader itself program and here it is here so uh, if you just again have a look at those uh, you can see it's self-program at this stage is enabled 
And, and you can see how it changes the actual uh, fuses itself as well down the bottom. So the FF, uh, which we can see there, becomes an FE when we change that. Okay, so now next thing to do is to uh, actually load up that bootloader. So there we're flashing the main hex file which we built. And now what we're going to do is we're going to run Micronucleus and we're going to go and find that Blinky code which uh, on Linux is put into the temporary directory. So there it is, there's the hex file. And it loads up after we plug the device in. And it's programmed with version 2.5 mic micronucleus. And there it is blinking. So what's the advantage? Well, if you have to use a USB ISP anyway, or an Arduino configured as such, uh, to put the bootloader on there, I'm not really seeing much advantage of it. And for me, the uh, the death knell came with the fact that with the A Tiny 13, that bootloader's too big anyway. That's sort of the circuit working for this week, and uh, I don't think I'll ever pull that one out of the buckets again. Take care. See you next time.